Hey, it's Pat. Thanks for clicking on this week's episode. I want to make you aware of something. We need some guests for some upcoming episodes. You want to come on the Pat Miller Show? Great. I'd love to interview you. Tell us something that we don't know. Share something that's working right now. Celebrate a big win with us. All of those things can be done, but you have to decide that you want everyone to hear you. So visit patmillershow.com and apply to be a guest. That's patmillershow.com. Okay, on with the show. America's Small Business Conversation is on the air. It's the Pat Miller Show. One hour exclusively for entrepreneurs to work on your business, not in it. It's time to solve problems, capture opportunities, and celebrate your wins. Powered by the Idea Collective Small Business Community. This is the Pat Miller Show. Now your host... Pat Miller, the idea coach. Welcome in to the Pat Miller Show. We are America's small business conversation. I'm your host, Pat Miller, the idea coach. Thank you for joining us again this week. Great guests are standing by. We're going to go through the top 10 trends in social media with Lori Hybe from Keystone Click. And we'll have a conversation about your personal brand and how to get it to cut through with Lindy Lambert. But before we get to that, I want to talk to you a little bit about why this show is on the air. Who the heck am I and what are we trying to get done here? Because what we've seen is explosive growth with The Pat Miller Show. And that means more people are tuning in and they're sharing the show and they're curious about what we're building. And you know what? They should be curious because we're doing something different than other small business content creators or organizations. And I just thought I'd explain why we're doing all of this and who the heck am I and what is an idea collective and why is this radio show on the air and why you should be a part of it. So I figured we'll go through all of that today. So hi, how are you? I'm Pat Miller, the idea coach. And before I tell you about me and the fact that I like long walks on the beach, I'll tell you what my vision is. And my vision can be summed up in one four-word phrase. It guides the community. It guides the radio show. It guides me every day when I get out of bed. You could call it my why. And it's simply, don't grow it alone. Don't grow it alone. I'm a small business owner. You're a small business owner. My wife is a small business owner. The hundreds of members inside the Idea Collective, everyone that listens to this show, we're all trying to build a dream, not a job, a dream. And without this community or without this message, you're going to be left with the current small business support system that doesn't really care too much if you win. And it really is drilled into all of us that we're supposed to be competing with one another, not collaborating with one another. Now, think how wild that is. You walk into a traditional networking event and you meet someone. Hi, I'm Pat Miller. Oh, hi, I'm John Johnson. That just sounds like a made up name, doesn't it? John John. Hi, I'm John Johnson. No offense to a John Johnson if that's you, but hi, I'm John Johnson. And we're kind of taught to think, Well, what can I get out of them and what are they going to get out of me and what can I sell them? As opposed to, tell me about your dream, John. Who do I know that I can connect you with and how can I help you grow? Don't grow it alone means we can all win. It means that we don't have to subscribe to the broken small business support system in the U.S. And broken, there's data to back that up. According to the SBA, 50% of us, 50% of us will not make it to year five. That's unacceptable. That makes me angry. No way. So if we change our perspective to don't grow it alone, we create content like this to educate and inspire. We create online communities where you can actually get together and collaborate. We create big time events that you deserve to make power partners and learn from the best of the best. We can start impacting the statistics and we can underscore don't grow it alone. But who am I and why am I leading this charge and 
Am I even qualified? Well, I'm a radio guy. 22, 27 years ago now, I started in the radio business, and I thought that was going to be my life. And five years ago, almost to the day, I woke up and realized I was building someone else's dream. I was always entrepreneurial, trying to come up with new ways to do things inside of an industry that sometimes doesn't really want you to do stuff differently. They want you to do it the way it's done in the big radio markets. That never sat well with me. I always like to create new things and challenge the way that things had been done. But five years ago, I realized, well, I uh, need to go build something. I need to go create a future for my family because if I don't, I was in my middle 40s. I would be a radio guy forever, and I would just do what other people told me for the rest of my career. That was not cool. Now, along the way, I had earned my MBA, and I had always been one of the radio folks that was working with the small business clientele. So I kind of knew how to talk to small business owners, and I loved coming up with fresh ideas and solving problems. So I left the industry, and I started consulting small business owners. Fast forward to the pandemic hitting. Now, when the pandemic hit, every traditional piece of the small business support system closed. They didn't know what to do. They didn't know how to use Zoom. They didn't know what to do digitally. They closed. They got put on hold. And if you remember back, all of us kind of looked at one another and said, oh, what are we supposed to do? Well, as a broadcaster, here's a lesson about broadcasters. I grew up in broadcasting in the Midwest. And when you're a broadcaster, first and foremost, you are a public servant. Your job is to serve the listeners. So when I was coming up in Lincoln, Nebraska, and Omaha, Nebraska, and Des Moines, Iowa, when a tornado was coming at the studio, you don't run to the basement. You run to the studio to protect your listeners. So here comes COVID-19, this massive tornado that's coming at the small business community, and I ran to the studio. I started a daily show that I called Small Business Rally Point, and I hosted this one-hour conversation every day for everyone in my network with the vision of if we talk with one another, if we share what we see, if we stay positive, we will figure out a way to get through this. And those conversations led to the PPP loans and how would we pivot and how would we serve our clients if we didn't have a digital strategy. And after 90 days of doing that, a community was born. On June 1st, 2020, we launched the Idea Collective. So now we went from talking about it to being about it. We've got this digital community where people are collaborating with one another every single day. They've been doing it for three years now. This don't grow it alone methodology, this idea that we should work together was starting to work. And at one point, one of the folks in the community said, hey, um, whatever happened to you doing radio? And I said, well, you know, my vision is someday to host a syndicated show to really bring this message to everyone and serve small business owners everywhere. And I'll never forget. She said, Well, then why don't you go do that? Shout out, Jamie White, massively awesome coach who said that to me. And you know when a coach or someone like that says something like that to you, you start, you know, chucking up the excuses. Well, I, you know, I couldn't, well, what if I, and I realized that she was exactly right. I had the contacts. I could do the show. We should get it on the air. So now we've come full circle. Radio guy in the past left to go consult small businesses. The pandemic hit. I started bringing people together. Now I'm back on the radio. So what's the show all about? What is the Pat Miller show? It's simply don't grow it alone in radio format. I bring on the best and the brightest guests I can get my hands on. And I tell them, give me something good. Teach our audience something they need to know. Don't come on here and promote your stuff. Don't go on here and tell us about your book and how we should buy stuff from you. Live the spirit of Don't Grow It Alone and tell us something that we can learn from. And our guests do it. And if they come on and they want to be on the air and they just start selling, I won't air their interview. I'm here to help you. And the vision 
is to continue to grow this show until we are in every market in the United States. We are serving small business owners at scale. Because the person in Lincoln, Nebraska, and the person in Amarillo, Texas, they don't know it, but they're facing the same issues. And maybe one has solved something that the other one needs help on. That is Don't Grow It Alone. That is the mission of The Pat Miller Show. So if you're a small business owner, I am here for you. If you want to get better, giddy up. If you've got something to share, visit patmillershow.com and let's get you on the air. But who am I? Why are we here? What is this all about? It's all about Don't Grow It Alone. And I'm glad you're joining us. Let's get the show underway. We're going to talk about the top 10 trends in social media with Lori Hybe next on The Pat Miller Show. America's small business conversation continues next on The Pat Miller Show. Are you a woman who needs to protect and grow your business? Or do you have a secret dream to start one? I bet you do. If you don't have a lawyer on your side, you may be putting your family and personal assets at risk. I know, I know. You might be avoiding lawyers because they seem overwhelming or intimidating. That's why you have to meet the team at Athena Legal Solutions, LLC.com. This all-woman team of talented lawyers are the most approachable, knowledgeable, and friendly team you'll ever meet. They exist solely to support women business owners who often go without the legal support they truly need. In 2023, they want to help 223 women create a solid legal foundation for their business. The first 100 women who mention this ad will receive over $100 off of their LLC starter package. Visit Athena Legal Solutions LLC.com. Now, America's small business conversation continues on the Pat Miller Show. Welcome back to the Pat Miller Show. This is America's small business conversation. And the point of the show is to help you grow your business faster. And one of the best ways you can do that is by doing great on social media and making sure that you're giving people what they want and you're doing what's working. And every week on the show, we do a segment called What's Working Right Now, and we have the answers to the test, literally what's working right now on social media from an expert. Lori Hybe is the founder and CEO of Keystone Click, and she's going to give us the social media top 10 trends of 2023. Lori, welcome to the Pat Miller Show. How are you doing today? Good. Thank you so much for bringing me on. Um, Pat, excited to be here, and I'm excited that you've got this awesome show. Well, thank you for that. And Lori and I have known each other for many, many years. She's a killer broadcaster and podcaster in her own right, so it's a pleasure to have you on the show. So before we get into the top 10, just give us a second on Keystone Click. What does it do, and why does everyone need to know about it? Sure. Keystone Click is a strategic digital marketing agency. We help our clients build brand awareness and generate leads online. We do that by first conducting research to help our clients better understand their customer. And then with that insight and data that we collect, we build a strategic plan that is focused on achieving our clients' goals, and we support the full implementation of that plan. And that's why I wanted you to share it, because Keystone Click, unlike some other agencies, they're always using data and they're always doing what works. So what's working right now on social media in 2023? I can't wait to hear this list. No, oh, I'm going to go through as fast as I can here. But first, I want to share that 90% of marketers that were interviewed recently are confident that their social media activities are going to bring a positive ROI in 2023. So any companies that are kind of throwing social media to the side, that is a big mistake to be making. So number one is to build your community. And you have done a fantastic job doing that. So give yourself a big pat on the back there. (laughs) Um, One in five social media users are joining online communities. And that's a way for them to just continue to be educated. And there's a sense of comfort and trust that's established within a community. How do you know if your community is engaged? Well, you probably see this, Pat, that others are promoting and advocating for your brand and community. Others are sharing their content on your channels. There's celebrations that are happening within your community. So community, extremely important. 
Let me ask a question on that. Is the reason why you think community is emerging to the top is because people are feeling a little lost in the sea of social media and they're looking for a home? Is that why it's cutting through? Absolutely. There's common ground. There's common. I mean, I look back at the number of social media groups that I'm in and it's all interest based or a common thread. So that's number one. And then two, there's trust there because you have someone that's in a similar mindset as you, such as your community uh, online, Pat, that there's already this established trust that's created. So trust and like interest, I think, creates a strong sense of, of community right away. Awesome. So that's number one. What's number two? E-commerce. Did you know one in five social media users has, have purchased something directly from social media in the past three months? Wow. Yes. I mean, think about your own experiences. And actually, I, I've seen um, this on, on different social media channels, people saying that they hate shopping in stores and they'd rather shop online. So why would you not make sure that if you have a product that it's easy for someone to just hit buy now right on the social media platform? I got to say, the social media algorithms are pretty good. Like, how did they know I wanted that mop? But I really want that oh, yeah. mop. Like, it's really good at serving the ads. Okay, number one's community. Number two is e-commerce. What's number three? Customer service. I mean, how many times have you picked up a phone and dialed a number and you're getting, you know, press one for X, two for Y, and it takes forever that you're on hold to get any sort of response? You filled out an email contact form. It takes forever. There's data that shows the fastest response you're going to get from a customer support standpoint is doing some sort of a, a direct message, a DM on a social media channel. And that younger generation, that's what they're familiar with. That's what they're comfortable with from a communication standpoint. So you have to really evaluate your customer support, customer service channels and make sure that social media is one of those top factors. Is that a danger of growing a large social media following that as you grow a big audience, they all think they have the red phone hotline to the problem solvers. You can't scale one without the other one, it sounds like. Well, that's very true. But at the same time, there are automation tools leveraging AI so that you can incorporate some sort of automation. If someone has a, a customer support question, you can have you know this database of we've had this question before and we already know how to answer it. So you can create some efficiencies in that, too. So we've only gone through three of the top 10 social media trends for 2023, and it's apparent to me that you need to get comfortable because we're going to have to do two segments here because this is way too good. We're talking with Lori Hybe, the founder and CEO of Keystone Click, about the top 10 social media trends for 2023. We've done community, e-commerce, and customer service. What's number four? SEO. I mean, we all know this already. To some extent, SEO meaning search engine optimization. There is some research done recently that phrases such as reviews, advice on, pros and cons, alternatives, best options. These are things that people are typing into social media, asking their network for input on how to solve whatever problem it is. And there is actually an article published in the New York Times. The, sub, the headline, the title of this article is, For Gen Z, TikTok is the new search engine. So you want to make sure that whatever your offering is, product, surface, solution to whatever that challenge is, that it's easy to be found on these social media channels. And isn't that crazy? I saw that same article that all of a sudden TikTok was the search engine and the reaction was, no, wait, come on. And the people responded to that saying, do you use TikTok? Of course, that's what we're using mm -hmm, it for. Absolutely. So a couple of quick tips on that. Make sure you're leveraging all the fields in your profiles. You're using those keywords and those key phrases. You're using hashtags. I find a lot of business owners that are new to social media don't understand hashtags. So that's a totally separate conversation. And make sure your username is easy and findable. And to that point, make sure you're using the same username across all social media accounts that you have. One quick follow up on SEO. Is it still as important as it always was on your website and the articles? That For you post? sure. A hundred percent. And this I don't want to go down this rabbit hole, but it, it, uh -oh, rabbit AI hole. is definitely playing a game in, in, in this. I and mean, Google just announced, you know, what they're doing with AI and how it is going to have a factor into SEO. So we'll save that for another topic, though. We don't want to go down that rabbit hole, but we got to get to number five and then we're going to take a quick break. So what is the number five social media trend for 2023? Micro influencers. So we've all heard of influencers. You've got a couple different types. Your mega influencers have over one million followers. Your macro influencers have 100,000 to about a million followers. Your micro has less than 100,000 followers. And then your nano has less than 1,000 followers. 
But the micro, the beauty of this is they're very interest based and their expertise on a very specific niche. So they have an established following. So if you can align yourself with a micro influencer to become an advocate or share the story about your brand and offering, you're going to get in front of an already established audience that has trust of that. And typically you're going to pay roughly $500 for a post or an engagement when working with a micro influencer. Great information so far. The top 10 social media trends for 2023. Our guest is Lori Hybe, founder and CEO of Keystone Click. We're going to come back with the other five coming up next on this edition of The Pat Miller Show. We're off to a great start with Lori Hybe from Keystone Click. I love when she comes on the show because she's always got great stuff that helps us learn something we don't know. The top 10 social media trends for 2023. Did you hear anything yet that kind of changes the way you think about using your social accounts? I know that I have. She's not done. She promised 10 social media trends. We will have more time with Lori Hybe coming up in just a moment. This is America's Small Business Conversation. You found the Pat Miller Show. America's Small Business Conversation continues next on the Pat Miller Show. You have a brand. Your business's brand is one of the most important things on your plate. As a business owner, you keep up with the trends. So what's hot these days? It's live events. Owning your small business combined with speaking at live events positions you as the expert in your field. That's where Bankable Events comes into play. Bankable Events is an event advisory and management firm with a primary focus on maximum conversion events. With more than 4,000 live events under their belt, they have the expertise to design face-to-face events that get your audience pumped up and generate profits. The minute you partner with Bankable Events, they'll start creating a customer customized strategy to take you from idea to income. Just think of the opportunities ahead for you. Call 303-550-1123 or head to bankableevents.com. Join over 1,000 other small business owners and CEOs who use Bankable Events to build community and drive revenue. That's bankableevents.com. Krista Morrissey for Choices Coaching and Consulting. Do you know where most small businesses go wrong? They invest in everything except their leaders. But through strong leaders comes strong business. Are you doing it wrong? Most small businesses focus on production and numbers. Production and numbers come through strong, resilient leaders. And strong leaders strengthen culture. They strengthen your resiliency and they strengthen your bottom line. I develop strong, resilient leaders who will drive your business. It is time for you to refocus your investment. Go to choicescoachingconsulting.com and lets you and I start the conversation now before someone else invests in your leaders. When you invest in your leaders, you invest in the bottom line of your business. Connect with Krista at choicescoachingconsulting.com. Act now. Krista at choicescoachingconsulting.com. Now, America's Small Business Conversation continues on The Pat Miller Show. Welcome back to the Pat Miller Show, America's Small Business Conversation. We're doing something important today. If you're trying to build your business through social media and you want to do stuff that works, you got to know what's working right now. And we have an expert on the show that is sharing the top 10 social media trends for 2023. Welcome back, Lori Hybe, founder and CEO of Keystone Click. All right, Lori, we left you after the top five, community, e-commerce, customer service, SEO, and micro-influencers, we've got five to go. What's the number six social media trend for 2023? Well, this is a trend, but it's been around for a long time. It's video, but it's short video and and really um, bite-sized chunks, snackable, easy-to-digest content, 30 to 60 seconds. This is your TikTok, your Instagram reels. Um, The shorter, the sweeter, the higher engagement you're going to get with that. And um, there's some data out there that Gen Z and millennials actually prefer to learn about new products and services through short, dynamic videos. 
So how do you coach your clients on that? Because I know some of your clients either aren't doing video or they're used to doing long form webinars. So how do you get them thinking about going from a half hour webinar to announce a product to a 30 second reel to announce a product? Yeah, it's all about the bite sized chunk. So actually, I was um, explaining this to one of my team members today. And, um, you know, big topic. Again, don't want to go too deep into a tangent, but. <laughs> Google Analytics has a major change that's happening right now. You know, instead of the universal analytics, it's now GA4. And she shared a, a huge nugget with me. And I'm like, that's amazing bite-sized nugget right there. And, and, and just the illustration of instead of giving someone a whole pie and expecting them to eat the whole pie, you're just giving them a little sliver, right? And that's something that's easy to digest and eat and consume. And I'm not going to hesitate to do that. But if you give me the whole pie, I'm going to have some reservations about eating that. So um, just a tiny little sliver is all you need, enough to just get get me tickled and interested in wanting to hear more. Maybe I want another sliver of pie to eat, you know? <laughs> Who knows? <laughs> That's a great way to think about it. Okay, what's number seven? Number seven is edutainment, okay? That's a big fun word to say. Your content needs to either entertain and or educate your audience. People, um, the last few years have been depressing and have been very, very heavy on people. So we want uplifting, funny. We want memes. We want um, engaging behind the scenes. We want relatable content. Um, that's also educating us. So relatable posts that also are telling some sort of a funny entertainment story can go a lot further. And that's the type of content that is more likely to go viral and get um, a lot more shares and encourages people to want to watch it. That makes so much sense to bring in some entertainment and levity in a space that's full of entertainment and levity if you're trying to teach something. Absolutely. I really like that one. Okay, we're on to number eight. What's number eight? Number eight is Instagram. Okay, <laughs> just the channel alone. Over 50% of marketers plan to increase their investment in Instagram over any other channel this year. And it is um, number one in, in their data for ROI, for engagement, for getting quality leads. Um, and actually for having a more accurate algorithm compared to any other social media channel. Tell us about the effect of Instagram, because it's the one social media channel that I never really fell in love with, but that's my own bias. So if someone's not into it, or at least they're not really using Instagram for their business, you mentioned some of those benefits. How else should we think about that channel as a part of our overall social media mix? Well, one thing, and this is an assumption, it's not based on fact, is that because the way the channel is built, it is bite-sized chunks of content. They don't allow you to put really long, meaty paragraphs or big, long videos. It is already bite-sized chunks of content. And I think that is the reason why it is so attractive. Um, and I, they've done a really good job with the algorithm and even the hashtags where you can follow specific hashtags and they they push content in front of you based on how you've engaged with other types of posts. So that's where, again, the algorithm is really good. So um, I would recommend, and this is for all social media channels, but Instagram specifically, if you go to business.instagram.com, they have fantastic educational resources and how best you can use their channel to help your business grow. Now, that is a power tip. You said it was business.instagram.com. Is that right? Correct. That's really good. If you're just joining us, you got to go back and listen to this whole show on the podcast feed at patmillardshow.com because Lori Hybe, the founder and CEO of Keystone Click, is going through the top 10 social media trends for 2023. And to catch you up, number one was community, then e-commerce, then customer service, then SEO and micro influencers, then short form video, edutainment. Did I say that right? Edutainment. Yes, yep. And then Instagram was number eight. We've got two to go. Give us the big finish. What's number nine? Okay. Number nine is original content. And this is really important from um, not, not just that you're creating your own original content, but that per channel, it's different. Because I've seen a lot of people do this and a lot of brands do this. You know, you write a post for LinkedIn copy paste on Facebook, copy paste on Twitter, that's not going to work anymore. You have to write the type of content per the channel. People are going to Instagram to have a certain type of experience. People are going to LinkedIn to have a certain type of experience. So the copy paste, the question is going to, the people are asking, why should I follow you on all these different channels if you're just publishing the same thing on every channel? So you need to, um, it's definitely, you can still reshare 
It's just the message has to align with the experience people are, are expecting on that specific channel. That makes so much sense when you say it that way. Okay, big finish. Number 10. What's the number 10 social media trend for 2023? Artificial intelligence. I knew you were going to say that. I knew it. <laughs> of course you did. <laughs> I mean, it's you have to, if you're not leveraging the tools in AI um, for creating any sort of efficiency, you're going to fall behind uh, very, very, very quickly. Um, there's a couple bullet points I want to share on this, though. First and foremost, understand the copywriting issues with AI. There's definitely a lot of um, there's a lot of positives with AI, but there's definitely some concerns and negatives. Uh, one of the stories I like to share is, um, you know, chat GPT passed the bar at like 90, 90 percent. But something that's really important to note and be aware of is that 10 percent. What is the 10 percent that they got wrong? So this information is not always accurate. I actually asked ChatGPT to write a little story about Lori Hybe, the owner of Keystone Click, and a, a third of the content was inaccurate. <laughs> that's not funny, but that's funny. No, it is. And I'm like, I need to share this with the world somehow. So thank you for letting me have a little <laughs> platform. It is a fantastic tool for creating efficiencies from giving you some inspiration and ideas on what type of content to create. I would not just throw something out there, write me a blog post for X, copy, paste, publish that. Do not do that. It's um, the search engines and people are going to be able to identify, you know, the, the issues with that. But if you can um, find ways to, re as I mentioned, repurpose content. So you've wrote a post for LinkedIn now go leverage AI and say, okay, rewrite this for, for Facebook now. That's a good use of leveraging AI um, and, and automating some of that. So um, yeah, you can use AI for ideas for so what types of posts to write on social media, um, headlines. It's been fantastic for headlines, um, personalizing some of those customer service support requests and creating kind of a bank to, to leverage in, in that engagement um, and just conversation starters, some, some Q&A that's out there. This is a great list of the top 10 social media trends for 2023. We have just a few moments left. Let's play lightning round. You talked about the top 10 things that are good. What's out of favor right now? What is something that's over and you really shouldn't be doing this any longer on social media? Oh, wow. I'm, I'm so focused on what to be doing. <laughs> I haven't thought about what we should be doing. That's an interesting question. Um, I, you know what? Don't don't sell. That's the number of one thing. If you're just constantly selling, um, no one wants to be sold to. They're, they're going to stop following you. They're not going to engage with your content. It's called social media, not sell me media. Yeah, for sure. All right. Another lightning round question. Is Facebook over or is that uh, death premature, at least the proclamation that Facebook isn't effective any longer? I It's very, very alive and healthy. I think a lot of people assume it's over just because there's some audiences that are not there. But there are a lot of people that are there. I mean, look at your your groups, your communities are probably more active than ever on Facebook right now. Yeah, that is true. The group feature of Facebook seems to have kind of revived the platform that everyone seems to be in like 10 different groups on Facebook because that's mm -hmm. what you do on Facebook. Absolutely. Well, this is a great list. The top 10 social media trends for 2023. Lori Hybe from Keystone Click. Thanks for coming on the Pat Miller Show. This was great. Thanks a lot, Pat. Always great having Lori Hybe from Keystone Click here on the Pat Miller Show. Lori, thank you for sharing the top 10 social media trends of 2023. Let's shift gears and talk about something uh, special. How about the Idea Collective's Small Business Conference presented by Bank59? This is our big time annual meeting for the Idea Collective small business community. And this year we are pulling out all the stops. We've got workshops all day the first day, and then we've got keynote speakers all day on Friday. And our anchor keynote speaker, the big time person from CNBC's The Profit, the business turnaround king, Marcus Lamonis, is going to share his three P's of building a business. And then we get to ask him anything. The Idea Collective Small Business Conference presented by Bank59 is like no other. Learn more at smallbizretreat.com. That's smallbizretreat.com. America's Small Business Conversation continues next on The Pat Miller Show. Developing your business is a journey, so make sure and bring along a trusted sidekick. As your business grows, Sidekick Accounting will be there. Sidekick Accounting's core services help take the confusion out of bookkeeping, 
tax preparation, and tax planning. Who's going to keep track of all those pesky receipts and invoices? Well, Sidekick Accounting has things covered as you grow your version of business success. So whether your small business is a side hustle or a conduit to freedom and owning your own business in time, get in touch with a trusted Sidekick. Sidekick Accounting. There are expert advisors waiting to hear from you now. Feel free to call or send a text message to 414-310-7689. That's 414 414- 310-7689. You can find them on LinkedIn, Facebook, and Instagram, or visit sidekick-accounting.com. Remember, developing your business is a journey, so bring along a trusted sidekick. Now, America's small business conversation continues on the Pat Miller Show. Welcome back to the Pat Miller Show, America's Small Business Conversation. And if you've been in small business for more than, I don't know, 3.2 seconds, you've had someone tell you your brand is super important. You have to have a great brand. But because everyone talks about it, sometimes it's hard to know exactly what that means and what a good brand is and how do you find one that feels like it's coming right from you personally. So if those questions are lingering for you and you want to find some clarity, you want to hear this interview with our guest, Lindy Lambert. She's a branding and messaging expert from lindylambert.com. We're going to talk all about branding today. Lindy, welcome to the Pat Miller Show. How are you today? I'm fantastic, Pat. Thanks for having me on the show. I'm glad you're here because branding is something that can get really foggy. Everyone talks about it, but they all have it seems, their own interpretation of what branding means. So before we get into building a brand that's authentic to me, let's start with how you, as a branding expert, would define the concept of a brand. What would you say? Okay, a lot of people say to me, oh, I have my logo. My brand is ready to go. And I say to them, that's great. Congratulations, you've taken a first step. Because to me, what a brand really is, and it's sort of one of those nebulous concepts that people just They use it, but they don't know exactly what it is. And to me, your brand is your story and your brand comes from your story. So when I talk about creating a brand, I'm talking about telling your story and then your authentic brand will come intrinsically out of that. You know, the real you will emerge and we turn that into a brand. Now, let's explore that for a second, because Traditionally, it seems as though what you say about your business used to be focused on what transformations you can provide for your clients. But it seems more and more it's about who you are and how you help your clients, that it's more personal maybe than it used to be. Am I crazy? Is that a shift that's happened somewhat recently? It's absolutely a shift. I mean, especially with Gen Z and the millennials. They want to buy something that their values are in line with. And if their values aren't in line with you, they're going to go somewhere else. And so people really do want to know and like and trust you as a person. And so when you put it out there, who you are, what you believe in, where you've been, what you do, and what you can do to help people, and you mix that with your heart and your head and your credibility, what happens is the real true brand emerges and it sort of becomes this beacon for the right and perfect client. So you start to attract the people who resonate with you. So we've talked about your story is your brand. So if if someone hasn't built their brand using that kind of philosophy before, how would you start the process? Talk us through that. Well, we start with sort of looking at a timeline of where they've been, what the jobs were that they've had or the, the businesses that they've had and what they liked about those businesses, what they didn't like about the businesses you know, what they like to do in their lives. It's sort of a conversation of, you know, where, who are you as a person and what do you bring to the table? Not just your skills, but what are your values? Like, what do you really value? Do you have integrity? Are you honest? Are you trustworthy? Are you really a cheerleader for your client if that's what they need? Like who you are as a person. So sort of explore that. This brand identity, when it comes just from you, like you said before, layers on top of your talents and skills so you become the only one in your marketplace that's uniquely you. This authenticity, it's really that important, the authenticity in your brand. Absolutely, 100%. So there's a statistic that says that 88% of consumers look for authenticity when they're looking for a brand to like or support. 
And that's because they're looking for somebody who's real and who's honest and who has integrity. And when you put yourself out there as the person that you truly are, they see that that comes through in your brand, no matter what you're doing. If you're a handyman or a contractor, a lawyer or whatever it is, who you are will resonate with the person. I can see how that can be really powerful and resonating with your client would be valuable. Do you think clients can smell a fake? Okay, here's a story. I just had this happen to me. Someone reached out to me on social media and invited me to connect with this group of women entrepreneurs who are going to support each other. And I said, that's great. You know, connecting on social media, that's what we do it for. And I thought, well, I found a community that I can join and be part of. And all of a sudden they're Instagramming me and they're messaging me and they're saying, well, you know, all of a sudden it's starting to feel a little salesy, like a little more Mm -hmm. salesy. And I said, is this conversation that we're going, they wanted to have a conversation with me. And I said, is this conversation that we have, is it going to be a sales conversation or is it going to be a let's get to know each other and how can we support each other conversation? And the answer was, well, we're going to get to know each other. And then if you like what we have to offer. (laughs) And I was so turned off because they weren't authentic in the beginning. You know, I felt like, oh, they had hooked me on something offering me a community what, what, when what they were really trying to do was sell me their product or service. We're talking with Lindy Lambert about authentic branding. And in the time we have left, I want to hear a success story. I want you to talk about someone you've worked with or someone you've observed that sat behind and walked away from the things they thought they were supposed to be doing and really allowed themselves to be the authentic brand for their company and the results that came from it. Because I would imagine if someone makes that courageous move, they're going to see more results in their business. Absolutely, 100%, Pat. So here's a really great success story is I had a woman reach out to me and her intention was to help me with something. And we started talking and she was telling me she's a writer. In her previous career, she was a very successful writer. She had won Emmys and Golden Globes and super accomplished lady. She was now sort of at this stage where she was in transition. She was a little bit older and not part of that whole Hollywood scene. And she felt like, she told me this, she goes, I felt like I was dead inside until I started talking with you. Mm. And the moment she started talking with me, I said, oh, this is easy. You're, you know, you're going to be coaching. You're going to coach the next generation on how to pitch and present and create story structure. And she got this light in her eyes and she said, that's it. That's what I'm supposed to do for my next step. And when I see that light in people's eyes and I'm able to hear what they have to say and take their story and synthesize it and reflect it back to them in a way that lights them up and changes their world. She told me, she said, you literally brought me back from the dead. You changed my world. And for me, that is a big success story because now there's no stopping her. She's embraced the branding process and she is off and running. And that is amazing. And I love that. And that came from finding what was inside, what was authentic to her. And it's really the way forward with branding in 2023. A great conversation. If you're using a brand right now that doesn't feel quite like you, hopefully this talk helped you out. Lindy Lambert, branding and messaging expert from lindylambert.com. Thank you so much for coming on the Pat Miller Show. I really appreciate it. Thanks, Pat. A big thanks to Lori and Lindy for being our guests this week. I'm Pat Miller, the Idea Coach. Thank you for tuning in. We'll see you right here next week. Thanks for listening to The Pat Miller Show. See patmillershow.com for more information on today's guests, events, and the Idea Collective small business community. A worldwide group working together to fight fear, inexperience, and isolation for small business owners everywhere. Join us next week for The Pat Miller Show. And remember, get clear, work hard, and never quit. Guests on the Pat Miller Show have agreed prior to appearing that they are receiving consultation and advice that they may or may not use at their own risk. No part of the show should replace accounting, tax, or legal advice.